I've been a horse trainer for over 15 years. In that time, I had a lot of life changes that inspired me to look a little bit deeper into the gaps that I believe are in this industry and the way we interact with our animals. is that they have been huge in being able to help people shift their perspective, completely shift their energy, and really thrive in their relationships. Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Mirror in the Stall. I am so excited to chat with Tara Davis. She is from California, or in California. I actually don't know where you're from, but we can get to that. Um, and I stumbled upon her with beautiful social media and felt like everything that I saw and read on the stuff you were posting, I was like, oh, my people. I'm finding my people. So I'm super excited to chat with you and get to know you more. So welcome. Well, thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to be here. It was a uh, very much a similar feeling when I saw I saw you message me and I clicked on your profile and read through and was just like, how have I not connected with you before? Yeah, I think right now there's such a big shift happening everywhere, <laughs> but also in the horse world. So feeling like finding your community and expanding from that space is so exciting and fun because I had made kind of a shift in what I was doing in the last like few years. And it felt like, I was like, well, this is so awkward. Like, I, I don't even know what I'm saying. Like, are people going to be like, what are you talking about? I thought you were a horse trainer. And um, so I think the excitement <laughs> when you find people doing something similar um, but different enough in their own way that you can like learn. Like I love having these conversations because I learn so much from what other people are doing and then how it can integrate into the work that I do. Like it just expands and continues to grow. So I get super excited. I think the best part about everything being so new and all this, this kind of big shift that you're talking about in the horse world is that everybody's just doing it on their own enough that it's all so unique to each person. Like every, I feel like every person who I come across who is kind of d dived off into this new way of working with horses, they're all coming from this unique perspective that gives them a unique way <clears throat> of working with their horses in, and it all, it's fun to feel the, the like threads of connection between all of us. And yet all of us are doing things like slightly differently, but with that same underlying vein of of just seeking something that feels more authentic. And I just, I love seeing everybody's authentic, unique way of working with horses. It's so beautiful. And I think the fun part about doing that and being a professional that does it is that you give people, horse owners that are learning permission to do it their own way too. I feel like mm -hmm. I run across a lot of owners that want like the formula and it's fun to be able to say, well, here's the framework, like maybe go with your gut a little bit. Maybe if you have an inspiration to do it a different way, like try it, you know, because I feel like it's just giving them permission to do it. Cause I think that everybody has their own way, but we've been conditioned to believe like, nope, this is how you do it. And this is how a horse is supposed to look. And this is the road to get there. And so I think it shut down people, people's ability to think that like, maybe they have their own insight even though they're not a trainer and it's like, no, you do. It's the same thing. It's not any different. <laughs> so <laughs> I like it to be able to show people that like, yeah, like just wing it and see if it works. And if it doesn't then try something different, you know? So it's fun. Yeah. The resiliency of the horses is just, you know, you can, you kind of have the ability to wing it in some instances. And like, if it doesn't work out perfectly, you can always work through it, especially when you're going guided by, you know, your intuition and you're, you're trying to do best by the horses. I feel like there's, um, there's kind of, I've learned that there's a freedom, like you can, you can always 
take steps backwards if you need to. And all of it is a learning curve, where, whether you know, you're taking steps forward and you feel like you're making progress or whether you need to take those conscious steps backwards. Like it's all going to teach you. And the fun thing has been, you know, there is no, um, there is no formula for what we're doing right now. And so the, the cool thing has just been getting to be guided by the horse and also you know, taking what we've learned from being, you know, women in the course industry for as long as we have and getting to, you know, use that wisdom we've accumulated. And then also that inherent connection that we have to the horse and letting the horse guide us, I think is, is so cool. And the best thing that I've learned is that, um, the conditioning that we have to this kind of like culture of only the trainer knows best and realizing that like all okay all trainers are humans all humans have intuition and the horse human connection and the way that we intuitively connect together is like it's universal and it's beautiful and we all have some little you know sparks of of wisdom that are unique to each of us so i think that's been a really cool thing to discover my favorite thing that you said was that trainers are humans too, because my entire intention when I started doing these calls was last or last year. I don't even remember. I feel like last year it was just, maybe it was last year. Maybe it was the year before. I can't remember. Um, it was last year and I had done a master class, and what I did within it was I brought a trainer in every couple of weeks and, um, instead of talking about the things they accomplished and how they did it, it was more of like, how human were you on your path? And it was really cool to see the trainers kind of let their guard down and go, oh, well, the, the time that I was in the bathroom throwing up before I went out to show, like, and panic attack and didn't want to go out, like that time I was like, <laughs> yeah, because I think that there is this, like, misconception that like, oh, well, of course you can do it, is what I hear all the time. And I'm like, do you know how many times I couldn't do it before I could do it? I think the only difference is that as trainers, we've chosen to be in that role. So because we know we're so passionate about it, we've been willing to continue through those moments where you're like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And um, knowing that eventually you would, so you just kept going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the human piece is like, no, this is just our chosen thing. And we've done it enough and failed enough and done it wrong enough and realized that you just keep going until you find the path that feels the best for you and the horse. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the human piece. <laughs> yeah. And I think we forget that so often because I mean, you put trainers on a pedestal and I feel, um, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, where people are like, well, yeah, of course you can do it because of, you know, you have this special something and it's like, it's not special really. I mean, we've committed, it is special because all of us have the ability to have a special connection, but it's not like, um, it's not like you and I have some special gift that other people don't have. It's just that we've fostered this connection and we've committed to pushing through the, the tough parts and it's, it's our life's passion. And I think that's something that I hear a lot. Well, oh, I can't, you know, I can't achieve, you know, bridal is riding, or I can't achieve liberty, liberty work or being able to get my horses to be as, you know, joyful and alive because I just don't have that skill. And it's like, but we all start, you know, I didn't know how to do this 10 years ago. I didn't even really know how to do this five years ago. It's all something that we just are accumulating over time. And um, I think the fun thing is watching people realize that they have the magic too because it is it does I mean I love the word magic too like I totally think that um you know finding scientific explanations for what we're doing is great but also just like sinking into that that like childlike wonder of what we are doing here is magic and everyone can be magic and that's so powerful and so when I get to see my clients recognizing that like that first moment that they feel that like magic connection where they feel like they can really communicate with their horse is just the best feeling in the whole world. And, and I think that's why we do what we do. Cause it just, it feels so good. I feel like there are some clients that are like, but I want to know why I'm like, but does it feel good? Are you happy right <laughs> now? Do you, do you, like, 
Are you experiencing what I'm experiencing right now? Because it feels pretty good. Like, let's not ruin it with all the other things. There are scientific reasons why, but we don't really need to think about those right now. Um, but it is that conditioning of like, well, prove it. Like, well, how do we know? I'm like, how do you feel right now? And what, how does your horse feel? Mm -hmm. So I think that's that piece of um, going in between. I have a private group that I had started and, um, and we had claimed that Wednesday would be um, woo woo Wednesday. Oh, and, I love it. <laughs> and, you know, if anyone wanted to share their woo moments and it was interesting cause there's such a, like, uh, oh, woo, oh, it's woo. And, um, and I said, well, give me your description of what that is. And I can't remember who gave it to me, but I was like, oh my gosh, forever will I say that. Um, and she said, woo is just wisdom, wisdom openly observed. And I was like, yes, that, <laughs> that is it because it isn't some, it's like, no, it's like you realizing and remembering that you are tapped in and can find the answers when you need them. When your horse is standing in front of you, you can receive that guidance because it's the wisdom that you have. And just all of a sudden you've openly observed it. So it's like, oh, there it is. I do know. <laughs> yeah. It's when you look at stars, you know, sometimes when you're looking up in the sky and if you try to look really hard at one particular star that kind of almost disappears and makes it harder to see. But if it's like that feeling of just opening up your vision and widening your perspective and just letting it all come in and then everything's clear all of a sudden. Yeah. Definitely. So tell us a little bit about you and how your career um, evolved. I, I can't imagine it started out where you are, obviously. So <laughs> what does that start look like? Um, well, let's see. I guess a good place to start was um, I had decided to get out of horses. I didn't want to be in the horse world anymore. Um, so I sold my horses and I moved up to Humboldt and um, I figured I was getting about as far away from the horse world as possible up here because we're very secluded and it didn't, I, from the outside, I didn't think there was a huge horse community up here, which by the way, I was very wrong. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just moved up here and then of course found myself, you know, longing for horses back in my life again. and. Um, ended up getting a couple horses to just go. I, I figured I would, I would get out of like constructed horse world and I would get out into the wilderness. And so I just decided I wanted to do backcountry riding and packing and that sort of thing. Um, and then I found a uh, Craigslist ad for a $250 Andalusian. And I hopped in the car and grabbed my trailer and drove 18 hours to go see her and came back with this absolutely wild, wild mare who <laughs> was severely traumatized and had been through a lot already in her short life. And um, I saw a lot of myself in her and I made a promise to her that I would never break her. And um, that's why I, I actually, I named her the unbridled goddess. And so she's kind of been my muse this whole time. And I didn't really know it when I was getting into it. I just I just found this like kind of wounded creature and felt like I, I wanted to give her the opportunity to live the life that I was starting to give myself. And from that, um, it kind of blossomed into this just incredible realization that I've never had before that, I mean, the things that this mare could do with me but having never been haltered before, um, or, you know, we, we would halter. She knew how to be haltered, but she didn't like being haltered. So we just worked together at Liberty and it was the only way we could ever make progress. The only way I could ever get through to her was to give her full freedom, full autonomy. And I kind of, I kind of had this idea like, oh, well, she might just be a pet. And, you know, she'll, she's just, she's this horse who I'll, I'll probably never get to do much cool stuff with, but I want to give her a good life. So um, that that's pretty much where I went with it. And then she just basically took me by the hand and said, like, let me show you what's possible. And over the next year, we I just, I realized what was possible when you took away your expectations of everything. And also the amazing thing is, <clears throat> with her I had to go completely force free because the second you put any pressure on literally any pressure on her whatsoever she's gone 
And so we really, um, I, I almost wanted it to be like an experiment. Like what, I guess, what could we do with, without any possible, uh, any possibility of me pushing her into doing anything. And it was like, she said yes to everything. I mean, we had the most incredible, we have the most incredible relationship together. And the things that she will do is just, it's mind blowing. And, and it, it really, it opened my eyes to a lot. And so I kind of just started playing around with other horses doing the same thing and realizing that it, it was universal at first. I thought it was, it was just her and that she was just this, I mean, she is this uber magical being, but I thought that maybe she was unique and that no other horse could really do this or because of her trauma, that this was the only way that she could do it and other horses wouldn't necessarily respond the same. And I started realizing that it was universal with horses. And so I got back into training a little bit and kind of dabbling here and there. And then um, my partner and I got a little ranch and started building it. And I basically just dove straight in and started taking on clients and um, just horse after horse after horse having incredible success with this kind of very uh, off the off the wall method of, of working with them. And it's not even work, it's like play, like just teaching them how to play and how to like fall in love with being with people again or for the first time. And yeah, so that's been probably a five, maybe six year journey and here we are. <laughs> I have to pinch myself on a daily basis. That's so fun. Um, and so I think that's the merit that I see on your um, like social media and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's so cool when, when you realize that maybe being told your entire life that you have to have a goal and you have to have a plan and you have to have the things that how much it restricts you. And, um, and then when you do say, okay, I'm just going to be here with you today and meet you where you're at and see what we can do and leave it open, how much quicker things <laughs> start to flow. Um, but that's the huge struggle for people. When I say, just let it be what it is today. Like know that your end goal is this, but release any expectation of how you get there. And then it's like, oh, well, okay. Okay, fine. And then, you know, the next day, you can tell when the shift happens when they're like, okay, fine. I surrender. And then the next day I come out and they're like, oh my gosh, I just was able to just to get on. <laughs> <laughs> it's magic. I, I wish I could make it easier for you to understand. <laughs> just, just stop. <laughs> Let it be. And then it all happens, but you have to stop trying so hard. And it's like, okay. <laughs> like that's the hardest part for people. Um, so what do you do as far as with your clients? Do you do like clinics? Do you have training horses? Like how do you work with your people? So I do some clinics. Um, I, I prefer to have long-term clients just because I, I, I really love the development of the connection, not just between the horse and I, but also the client and I. I really want to get deep into, you know, who that person is and how, how who they are affects their relationship with their horse and what that looks like. So I, I'm really, um, I'm really blessed to have just incredible, vulnerable, beautiful, wonderful, powerful humans as my clients. And so a lot of my uh, clients are in my area. And so I either travel to them or they have their horses here boarded with me. Um, and I do have some um, long distance clients that we do like Zoom sessions and stuff with, but I'm trying to move as much as I love doing that and being able to connect all over the world, I'm finding more and more as I'm, as I'm trying not to spread myself so thin. Cause at first I was like, everybody needs to hear this. Everybody needs to have access to this. And I, I'll give it as much of it away as I can. And um, I just was getting so burnt out so quickly and realizing that I have to come back to like what really lights my passion and lights my fire. So I can continue to, to do this for as long as you know I can and also realizing that like giving too much 
can also mean that you're not going to long term, you're going to burn yourself out and not be able to help as many people. So focusing back in on your passion and realizing, you know, sticking with what my heart tells me is like my heart's work. Um, and that is working hands on with horses and the humans. And um, I, a little bit of a sidetrack, but it's, I think it's relevant for a lot of people because um, I live in a really, really rural area that's, I didn't think, and anyone coming here from the outside wouldn't think there's much of a horse community. And for a long time, I thought, you know, I did, I conducted my business online for quite a while before I ended up even starting really working with local people. And I thought the reason why I did that was because I believed that there wasn't gonna be many people, especially in this area that was interested in taking any sort of non-traditional approach to horsemanship. And uh, I was so shocked that, I mean, my clients aren't just, I think a lot of people think my clients are like, people with Andalusians and Lusitanos and Frisians and everyone just wants to ride bareback through the fields and take pictures and wear long flowy dresses. And it's like my clients range from, you know, like dressage divas to backyard riders to endurance people. And it's, it's universal. There isn't just one type of person or one type of horse that um, wants to connect in this way. I think the connection that we're all looking for is, is universal. And, and that's been a really cool thing to realize. And that even in a small rural area that might not necessarily, you might not necessarily think your clientele is here, like your people find you. And it's so cool to let that process be. That's really good, especially for, um, especially for trainers. Cause I feel like that's what you box yourself in a little bit, especially when you start doing things that don't look like what normal <laughs> training looks like. Um, I think that there was a point where I, knew that I had to stop doing what I was doing or what it looked like. Cause I'd done it for so long that people, I, my story was people know me, have worked with me, expect a certain thing from me. And so if I don't give that to them, then they're going to be disappointed or whatever other thing was attached to that. And I think there was one point like two years ago where I was just like, um, everybody, I'm not going to train anymore. <laughs> I had to like, put like a full, like, I'm not doing this anymore. And people were like, well, what do you mean? Well, what about me? Cause you've already worked with me. And I was like, I just have to stop everything because I don't know how else to do it. <laughs> then go cold Turkey and then just work with my clients here. They're already here and go, okay, we're going to experiment on you guys, <laughs> which is basically <laughs> what I did at multiple different levels to them. Like, okay, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but try this. And so yeah, it is um, such a blessing to have clients that are open-minded, but I think what it comes from, and I think this is the most powerful thing for trainers that are um, watching and starting to create their own way, is that if you just do it like you know you need to do it, the people that resonate with the work will find you and you won't have to go like prove yourself to anybody. And I think that's sort of what happened when I was like, I'm not doing that thing that I do anymore. Um, <laughs> And then all of a sudden everybody was so, okay, well, okay, what are we doing? And I'm like, well, okay, this is weird. <laughs> so yeah, that, that piece feels like, and that's true to like life in general, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you just are and everything else goes away, that's not meant to be there. And that's so much easier than trying so hard to prove like, I can do it this way, but look, I can still help you go show, you know, like it was this weird thing I was torn between. And I still think sometimes I get stuck in it. Um, even at the expo, I I had three days and it was the first time I'd done anything like that. And I was like, oh, thank God for Warwick because I feel like he's opened up doors in a way that's bigger and a bigger platform. So it's created a space for this. Um, and I do a thing called mirror sessions where the horses are loose and I take just people through a meditation, a somatic release there's music and it, there's different things involved. And I was like, can I really go to an expo and do that? Because <laughs> and I was like, I mean, all right, I'm going to do this, you know? And, um, but day two, I was like, so day two, I need to do something that looks more like training so that people know I'm actually a trainer too, like instead of all this other stuff. And I just realized 
And I still struggle even thinking about the next expo. Okay, am I going to do the same thing or am I going to do what I think I'm supposed to be doing? And that day two, it felt like I was disconnected because I was torn. You know, it was almost like I was trying to prove that I knew what I was talking about. Look, I can use, you know, dressage terms. I can use like, because I can help all of you, you know, and it was like, I was trying to prove to my, and my clients were all like, you're just a little disconnected and a little, and there were several other like life things going on all at the same time, but it made me realize like day three was just because I had to go through those first two days of trying to go, oh my God, what are people going to think? Um, what's going to happen? What if this, what if it doesn't look like it normally looks like it was just crazy, crazy growth experience. And then day three, I just remember walking to the arena and being like, I don't care. It's going to look exactly like it's going to look. I don't know why all of a sudden I've decided that I need to like, and it was so good. You could feel in the horses walking over there. They were like through the crowd, like we have this. And I was like, oh, yeah. thank God I had my little like magical herd with me. Cause I was like, I, if any other of my horses, I was like, could I do this? They were such rocks for me. And then that, the third day was like, okay. So, but that was just that proof of if I just stay authentic in what I'm doing, like everything is fine and it will be very powerful. But it is a thing where it's like, oh, I, I, I'm not reaching. Look, I can, I can. I'm still like another, a real trainer, which is something I've heard myself say multiple times, which is so ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it, it's that piece of, oh, wow. Like it's not just for a specific set of people. It's something that, why did you, you know, uh, I always ask people like, why did you get into horses? Like, what was it? What was it? It wasn't normally, it isn't oh, because I wanted to go show and win the things. Normally it's big. Well, I liked being around them or, you know, I felt like that's where I could connect or I was like, we'll go back to that. Like we get so far away from that. But yeah, it's like, it's almost reminding people no matter what they're doing that where, what they were reaching for when they started and why they connected with horses. Yeah. And the same goes for, you know, for you, like why it is that you do what you do. It's, it's not, I mean, I think all trainers know it's not really for the money. It just like perpetuates our habit, you know, but, um, but, you know, we're doing it because all, all horse people, I think for the most part are doing it because like at the, at the root of it, they love horses. And I think that's why so many people from so many different backgrounds resonate with the kind of, um, you know, the kind of work where it's not necessarily, we need to come up with some sort of genre name. Like <laughs> it's so hard to describe as from an umbrella term standpoint where you're like that thing, you know, that thing that we do, that's like not really one thing and not really the other, it's that thing. <laughs> so <laughs> hard to describe it, but um, you know, people from all around resonate with it. And I think like you were touching on with, with work, it's, that's opened up doors because it's a huge platform and people are like, oh, wow, I can, I can be a barrel racer and I can like be emotionally connected to my horse and understand that we can go and run an amazing barrel race. And then I can come back and get emotional feedback from my horse on how to better, you know, connect with them. Or I can go and be an eventer and have the ability to, you know, sit in the pasture and, uh, meditate with my horse and you know on, so on and so forth it's it like surpasses these kind of niches that we've put ourselves in as horse people and because at the end of the day we all are in it because we love horses and then I even think of you know when people look at different trainers that are you know showing and doing different stuff and it looks like the techniques that they're using are really harsh or, you know, oh my gosh, that's abusive. And, and I think that as you grow, you start to recognize, well, that probably isn't serving the horse for the best, but still in that person's space, like they think that they are doing what is best for that horse. So it still doesn't take away from the amount of care and love that they have for the animal or the sport. Cause I even think about the stuff that I did in the beginning and I'm like, oh God, like I just like, cringe, Mm -hmm. but never, ever did I not love the horses and think that I was doing what was exactly what they needed at the time. I mean, there was no like abuse, but I mean, from the 
perspective now I look at it and it, I mean, it is abuse when, you know, they're tied around or there's, you know, the pushing and the, the fighting and the, um, but it never came from like anger. It was always like, oh, here, I'm going to help you get through this. And it was like, oh God, that's so, <laughs> but I think at the base of it was always like when you recognize that and you watch other trainers and they're doing their thing, they really are, you know, for the most part, from their perspective, doing what they think is best for the horse and what is, you know, the most, um, that's going to help them the most. So kind of keeping that in perspective when you're out there, mm -hmm. I hadn't really been in the real horse world, had been in my bubble here for a long time. And then we went to the expo and I'm just watching, you know, and I was like, oh, I just haven't been around all of this. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> like I can't, I can't watch this. Like, yeah. so it's um it's hopefully a big shift for everyone to start to see like going to one clinician at an expo and then going to another one and going well that's interesting like you know you see like you know but releasing that whole responsibility for reaching everybody might help there's such a better way let me show you let me show you and that is where the burnout definitely comes from yeah and wouldn't it be easy if we could just like and, and this is kind of what we do as, as horse people who I think every horse person has experienced this at some point where they look at somebody who they view as what that person is doing is not right for the horse, that it's bad for the horse, that it's abusive. And they go like, oh gosh, what a monster. Like that person must just hate their horse, you know? But yeah, that it would be so easy and it is so easy to just go, well, that person just doesn't, you know, care about their horse. So they only care about winning or what X, Y, or Z. But in the reality is, and this is where it always comes back to like, we're all just human. We're all doing the best we can with the information that we have. And those people are doing the best they can with the information that they have. And there is no way that you, like yelling at them for doing something is never going to be the way to get through them. And that's what I realized with the horses. Um, that's like been the biggest, the single biggest lesson that the horses have taught me about people is if I'm going to go to my horse and go, I can't teach this with force. I need to teach this when there is a bi-directional communication going on where the horse understands what I'm asking and is emotionally prepared and is ready to give that to me. How the hell am I going to go think that yelling at some person for doing what they think is right is going to fix anything. Like it's just not going to fix it. And the people who are ready will see it and the people who aren't for whatever reason, um, they just won't and, and screaming about it at them isn't gonna help and coming coming to them from a place of um, acceptance and love and understanding that these people aren't trying to be bad people in any way, shape or form is, is gonna be so much more helpful than, you know, <laughs> berating them for their choice <laughs> of training method. It's, it's just, it's, I mean, I know we, as horse people get so defensive because we love horses so much, but um, if we can understand that teaching our horses needs to come in a different direction, like we have to be able to understand that teaching people also has to, we have to switch our perspective about that as well. And, you know, people learn best by, by watching examples happen. And I think that's, what's cool and why social media is so amazing, you know, getting to getting to show for me personally, like, look at my stallion, my stallion, who was this like, you know, um, he was a, a solitary horse who had never been able to be turned out with other horses before. And, you know, all this stuff and had never been trained with anything other than like traditional horse training at 15 can have a total life change and be able to, you know, ride bridle lists and, and, you know, be turned out with other horses and, um, be ponied off of and all this stuff. And it all comes from a force-free, you know, approach. And when people see that sort of thing, they're like, if I had, you know, talked about how bad it was that people chose to train stallions in some way or another, like people would have just, no one would have read it and it wouldn't have gotten through to people. But when you can just like lift up the beautiful things that you discover in your own life, and that's the kind of thing that might make someone think a little bit differently. And it might be a trickle down effect where someone might just have a slight change in their behavior that then trickles down. And, you know, five years from now, it might be, they might decide to take a complete overhaul of what they do 
but don't, you know, discounting that little tiny shift that someone might make the one tiny way that they might change is it's still a huge um it has the potential to have a huge effect down the road i know that is true for me with my uh my horsemanship journey i i came across this incredible woman who i worked with or worked for for a year and she had such a effect on how i worked with horses but it didn't really set in until a couple of years after i had worked for her it was like you know, getting to see what was possible and then being like, well, but I can't do that, you know? And then making those small shifts and then a couple of years later it blossoms and, and it, it had a lot to do with meeting the right horse at the right time and just having that right, being at the right place in my life where I was willing to just go, yeah, we'll just give it a shot. And I think that's, I think everybody has that whole one horse in their life where they, you know, they, meet them at a certain time for a certain reason and it helps them to to change and grow and and you know become a better horse person for that horse yeah definitely um i always tell people <laughs> that i feel like there is a certain level of um it's almost like soul contracts like they come in and it's like I'm here to highlight all these things for you. And hopefully you're open enough to see it as um, the space where you can heal deeper so that you can. <laughs> um, and again, it's such an interesting thing when you change your perspective about when you kind of bump up against resistance with them or you're not getting what you think you're supposed to be getting. And I always tell them, well, what is your horse inviting you to do? Or what is your horse inviting you to look at right now? And it's always like, oh, well, shit, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, they're here for you. I feel like it's just any relationship, any situation that comes in where, you know, you're feeling like that um, highly emotional, um, heightened, like stress or, you know, judgment, or you're upset or whatever it is, it's coming in for you to like pause and go, what is this moment inviting me to do? What is it inviting me to look deeper at? Um, and I have, I have, I feel like I have three, oh, I have three horses and, um, and they're all red. I don't even like red. And, but I'm like, <laughs> these are not horses I would have necessarily picked. I, I, um, I got them while I was married, two of them, when I had before, and they were both young. So I've had them one since she was with her mom and the other one was untouched, um, little yearling stud. And I got them and they were bred to do what they're bred to do, rain cow horse. And I was like, these are the ones I'm going to go show with. I'm so excited. I finally have these horses that are, I'm not trying to make a horse that's almost into what I want. Like these ones are really well bred and, and, um, and they were doing so well. And then mid my, you know, through my divorce, like they, they really started to fall apart. And for me, I was like, well, like, <laughs> this is the one thing I'm good at. And now look at them, you know? And so but it was because they were inviting me to reconnect deeper with myself. So I, they came in for that purpose. They're so sensitive that they were not going to tolerate. And they're both, I don't even know if they have the ability to shut down. <laughs> one's <laughs> fighter and one's like, mm -mm, I don't think so. This is queen of America who was like <laughs> a unicorn. Anyone can ride her, but she's talented and she's just a unicorn. And so thank God neither one of them could shut down because they both were just like, this one, I'm gonna take you down. And the other one was like, good, you're not getting near me. And <laughs> so that was what kind of opened up this like, oh God, my own horses are falling apart. Like what the heck? And I never knew how to help the people. And I'd been a trainer for so long and I really didn't even like the people. I was kind of like, oh, these poor horses have to deal with these people um, until that kind of interruption in my life. And so um, it was definitely, they were there for that purpose. They weren't going to just take care of me because it was time that I like took care of myself. And I think that's what the invitation from them was for sure. So I always tell people like, these horses are here for a reason. And this one particular is in your life for a reason. So I come across sometimes those people that wanna just sell their horse and get a new one. Well, this one went lame, this one's lame. You know, this one, this, this one, that I'm like, so you're going to just at some point realize that you've got to just look at what's going on, you know, common denominator. Mm -hmm. um, 
And it's kind of a tricky thing to say to people until you actually, the intention behind it is actually sincere. And I think that's what I was missing before I had to go through everything. Like you can feel it. I'm not judging you, right? But I'm telling you with love, <laughs> this might be an invitation for you to look deeper at what's going on for you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just think the horses definitely like soul contract is the word that I always come in. Like, I love that. Mm -hmm. they're here and you guys have your little karmic dance you're going to do in this lifetime. So you better just get comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel like, and all the horses that I've encountered, they know. And sometimes, and oh God, they're so patient, you know, cause they, they know like the moment they come into your life, they're here to teach you certain things. And it might be like three years or four, four years or five years or 10 years before you finally you know, sit down and are like, okay, tell it to me straight. And it's so sweet because I have some amazing clients who have horses that they've had for really like since birth. And these horses have just been like <laughs> tapping their feet and like, all right, you clock's ticking. Are you going to listen yet? But they're still there and they're still just gently tossing out invitations until, you know, something happens and they just finally get to, you know, really speak heart to heart with their person and it's it's so cool it's such a it's such an interesting thing to get to witness and you know I, I think it's the same as as when we think about like trying to teach other people people can only learn when they're ready when their hearts are ready and it's hard as humans to see that and see like okay this is growth that's pot there's there's oh, right over the hill there's growth and if I just give you a little push, maybe you can get it. But sometimes, sometimes you can give them that little push. And sometimes you really have to wait. And I think horses are so, they just have that intrinsic ability to understand when to wait and when to push. Like you said, with your horses who were there at the expo with you, and they were just, they were just your rocks. They were there with you throughout the whole thing, even though, you know, they might've been giving you some little nudges like, hey, you know, stick to your, stick to your intuition. But horses know when to wait and when to let you have that realization on your own. And also they know when you need that little push. And I think, you know, it's that they just have divine timing that us humans are. <laughs> Maybe we just cerebrally overthink it, but the horses just have this beautiful ability to just know exactly the right timing. It's so beautiful. And when you start to recognize that stuff, then it's when that appreciation for every little thing that they do all of a sudden becomes like, oh, well, look at that. You know, even the things that clients or and myself might have labeled as whatever label, like stubborn or lazy or any of those things, it feels like instead now it's like it's all with a purpose. You know, there's a reason why that's happening. Why don't you look at it? It's not just them being like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like that doesn't really um, the, the lightness that that brings when you're working with horses, um, changes everything. It makes everything so much easier and, and feels so much better to go. Oh, and it's, um, the contrast of when I have a new client come in and they have that story. Oh, well, he's just a X, Y, Z. It's like, okay, well, is that, you know, is that your opinion or is that an observation? Like what's actually happening? Or are mm -hmm. you like seeing it through the lens that you've got going and that's somehow serving you? You know, um, and I feel like too, those stories, I was thinking about this when I was, I went to get um, food for my, my kids this morning because I was rushing around and I was driving back and I got stuck in this really long line of traffic because um, we have a traffic light, there's some construction on the road. And before I stopped in it, I, I saw it on the way out and I was like, I'm going to drive the back way home. And then I forgot. And so I was sitting there and, and I just realized that um, it was this story of like, and what kept coming to me was stop telling the story that you don't want to hear. Like stop telling the story of, you know, the person that did you wrong or stop telling the story of the horse that is X, Y, Z and the things you don't like, like stop telling those stories and recreating those. And, and I, when I think about the clients um, that come in and have their ongoing stories about their horses, I'm like, but what do you want, you know? And if they have that deep attachment to that story, then, you know, sometimes I ask them, why do you need your horse to be like that? Why do you need a horse that's anxious? 
you know, why do you need a horse that's always in your space? Mm-hmm. You know, and all of a sudden people are like, I don't need that. And like, there's something deeper, right. And you're unconscious that is like craving that, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and to stop like telling the story of what you see right in front of you and go, but what do you want and get clear on that and work from that perspective. And I feel like, um, like then when you do see the stuff that you would have labeled as misbehavior or whatever else before you see it very differently. Um, and that piece is fun for me to see people not automatically go to like, wow. And de- so I always tell people no offense, no defense. Mm-hmm. Like if you're not fighting and you just are, then all of a sudden this stuff starts to kind of unravel and they kind of show you what they actually need from you versus you telling them all the time. Um, so I like that piece, but that, I guess what I want to ask you before we wrap up is like, is there anything that you feel like you want to share that um, is like the biggest, uh, most significant kind of thing that you keep in the forefront of your mind when you're working with a horse, like your, you know, your first most important priority and intention and, um, and what does that kind of look like? And how does that string through like the rest, like you working with your clients or working with horses? Like, what is that little thing that you keep with you that keeps you focused on being present and in the moment with them? The, the term joy just in and of itself is I want that to be the the guiding force throughout my entire work with all the horses so discovering what it is that brings them joy and rekindling that and a specifically joy of movement um, being able to fall back in love with their body you know I think humans and horses are both born with an intrinsic love of movement and exploring their body and whether it's through you know our cultural conditioning that tells us you know stop fidgeting stop cartwheeling you know stand in line stand up straight all that sort of stuff or whether it's you know putting our horses into a frame and never letting them out of that frame or you know deciding what is good movement and what is bad movement and when good movement should be and when movement happens unasked for then it's bad no matter what it looks like and all this all this sort of stuff that I think slowly just crushes the joy out of movement and eventually like we hear I hear my my clients talk all the time about like how they, oh yeah, it's my worst, my worst trait when I'm riding or working with my horse is this one thing with my body and it's just always there against me. And I think what I, what I really want to do is to teach humans and horses to dance together in a way that they can just let go of all of that crap that's just like clouded their beautiful, clear crystal lenses and just let them get back into touch with their bodies because at the end of the day when everything else falls away and you're just on the ground playing with your horse and you just get back into you know the way that your body and their body can communicate together through time and space it's just such a beautiful pristine space where you know you're not thinking about what hurts the horse isn't thinking about what hurts and 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 it just gives you this gift of full presence with life and if at the end of the day I can teach you know even just one person about that and give them that gift that's you know I think the most most powerful thing I can offer and the beauty of taking away that idea that like horses hate moving or that horses don't want to move you know this this idea of like well, if you want your horse to be a beautiful riding horse that they have to like be pushed and forced and kind of manipulated into this specific movement pattern. And really at the end of the day, those movements that we like, whether it's, you know, dressage movements or jumping or working cattle, it's all in there internally in the horse. And instead of trying to force it to come out, we can just gently learn how to encourage both ourselves and our horses to to naturally let that be. I mean, that's what 
my horses have always taught me is that it's inside all of us and that all we have to do is rekindle that love and rekindle that joy and really just let go of all of our expectations and just like be present in the moment, be present in our bodies. I, I, like, I always use that example um, of like how we're conditioned from when we're little we're just and them too well we're all born knowing how we can release the tension and how we can discharge it and now it's just like movement and sound like look like I always give the example that these little kids are born just flailing and screaming and they cry when they're upset and they you know yell when they feel like it and we have all these adults saying don't do that that's too loud in public sit still like And we do the same thing to the horses and we shut down their ability to just release when they need to. And like you'd said, making, well, if you move that way, it's wrong. If you move this way, it's right. It's like, it's just moving. Like, stop. Like who said, (laughs) I always say that when new clients will come in and, you know, I always see people like I had one client um, with the mounting block and it was just this trying to get the horse right exactly where she wanted it was and it was back and forth and it was all I was like just pick the mounting block up and throw it next to that horse because it wasn't even like the horse was fidgeting the horse just she couldn't get and I was like just pick the mounting block and put it and she's like oh my last trainer would never and I was like who who cares like just <laughs> he's fine like just put it next to him exactly where you want it and get on and it was just so funny it was like this I can do that I'm like who made all these rules like, who cares like is the horse anxious about the mounting block? No. I'm like, you guys are just having like some <laughs> kind of weird like moment. Just make it easy on yourself. It doesn't have to be a struggle. But it was just that like, oh, like I don't know who made all the rules and I don't know who makes it right and wrong if you do certain things. And I think that's sort of the paradigm we're trying to get people to like break away from is just let it be exactly what it is and stop making everything so difficult (laughs) and stop judging yourselves and your horse and all the things so much it could be so much easier (laughs) if you just let all that go (laughs) yeah totally I get uh sometimes because the kind of work that I do with the horses you know I I do love biomechanics and I love working with the horse's bodies and all this sort of and I love dressage but you know people will see my horses and they'll be, I do Liberty dressage work uh, at Liberty, (laughs) let the horses discover how to reconnect with these like upper level dressage movements. And they'll be like, well, that's not a biomechanically correct passage. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like that horse is loving movement and has decided to explore what cadence and lift and rhythm feels like in their own body without being forced to and they're exploring and they're loving it and it makes them feel super badass so why would I take that horse who has just offered me this beautiful vulnerable gift and go that's not a real passage I'm like okay but also (laughs) the amazing thing too is realizing it's I I always call it um, the idea of not being able to see the forest for the trees because people will look at a movement, especially when it's done at Liberty and be like, well, that's not X, Y, or Z. That's not a proper biomechanically correct canter pirouette. And it's like, but this is just a step along the way. And this might be the 15th step and it might not look as good as the fifth step or it might look better than the 20th step, but it, it's, it's a journey and there's no, it's not linear. Learning is not linear. Exploration of movement is not linear. Joy exists on all different levels and getting to just explore and letting go of what is correct and what isn't and learning that the only thing that's not correct is really just drilling one thing over and over again and not allowing any other movement. Like that's the only thing that's not correct. That's the only thing that's going to hurt you. That's the thing that's going to crush your soul, crush your body, cause injury, exploring yourself, exploring your environment. All of this sort of stuff is so key to becoming a resilient, strong, you know, empowered being. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't look right to the other people around you. If it feels good to you and it feels good to the horse, that's, you know, that's what matters. Yes. So good. No, oh, that's like the perfect way to end. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for hanging out and um, having this lovely conversation. And, um, and yeah, I definitely want to do stuff with, I need to meet you in person and we need to hang out and do stuff. Yeah, because definitely. That's obvious. Especially that you're in just California. Like that's easy. It's a no brainer, but yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing everything with us. And um, do you have anything that you're doing right now that you want to share with anyone? Clinics coming up? Anything? Um, I have, I have some clinics coming up, but they are all full. Um, And I'm hoping to get some more clinics on the schedule for next year. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will, I don't know when it'll happen because I'm (laughs) currently have more horses than I'm supposed to, but uh, I do have some online courses that I'm trying to release um, that works on, um, I'll be re-releasing my herd course, which talks about um, getting ways to connect deeper with yourself so you can connect deeper with your horses. And then also hopefully a bit of a more advanced um, positive reinforcement based dressage work. Um, But that's all in the works, hopefully in the next year or so realistically um but if anybody's really interested in that they can sign up for my newsletter on my website and i will be releasing info on that when the time comes perfect um yay awesome i'm so happy we connected and um we i will make sure that everyone has in the show notes your website and everything so that they can reach out to you if they want some more Thank you. Well, much appreciated. This was a great conversation.